So I have a question for you. How old are you? <laughs> is that a simple question? It is if I'm asking your chronological age. That's the present year minus your birth date. That's the year on your driver's license. And that's the year you celebrated at your last birth date. It's also the age you think you are. But now the question gets a lot more complex if I ask what your biological age is. And that's actually the more relevant question, because that's what wakes us up in the morning. That's how we get out of bed in the morning. That's how we make decisions over the course of the day. It's the age that tells us how far away disease is. It's the age our friends think we are. So if we ask what your biological age is, some of us can ask that, answer that very easily because they feel that much older than they are, or they feel that much younger than they are. But if we really want to quantify it, if we want to study it, if we want to find ways to halt it and to even reverse it, how do we know our biological age? This comes down to biomarkers. These are indexes in the body that we scientists agree quantify aging and tell us how far away disease is. Is disease going to happen tomorrow? Or do we have years of healthy living? It also tells us how we feel day to day. There's many, many, many biomarkers. Some of them are laboratory tests. We measure the oxygen levels of our blood, inflammation indices, sugar levels. Or they may be measurements of brain speed and brain capacity, our bone density. They may also be genetic markers in our genes. But we leave it up to biomarkers to help us decide what our biological age is. Now, all these numbers. We know so many numbers. Why is it important to know our biomarkers? Why not outsource it to somebody else to look after? If you think about it, we know so many numbers. We know our bank balances. We know our 401ks. We know our RRSPs, and we know our superannuation funds. Those are all the same things, just different countries. We also know our SAT scores. We know our fastest sporting times. We know our iPhone passcodes, and we know an endless string of pins. Why is it that we don't know the very numbers that govern how we feel day to day, and also how far away disease is, and ultimately death? After looking after 15,000 patients for over 20 years of clinical practice in five different countries, I conclude that the single key to health is empowerment. With empowerment and understanding your biomarkers, reversing them, monitoring them, we enjoy better health. We can reverse these biomarkers. And with better health from empowerment, comes vitality, productivity, and happiness. I'm designing an app. Well, actually, my 12-year-old's designing the app. <laughs> and it's going to help you look after these biomarkers in an easy-to-understand way. So if you're sitting back thinking, you know what, all this aging business doesn't pertain to me, I want to tell you about a study that was just published in July 2015. And it's called the Quantification of biological aging in young adults. This study looked at 954 young people, and it, did, it studied 18 biomarkers. It also asked the subjects how they felt every day. How old did they feel? It also asked an outside panel of judges to rank how old the subjects were. The study concluded that there was a 33-year spread in biological age by the time you're 38. Some of us would be 28, and some of us are actually 61. And not only that, but the pace of aging picks up the worse our biological, our biomarkers are, such that it's a lot quicker to get from 58 to 61 than it is to get from 28 to 31. So aging starts young, and it moves fast. Now to talk about my favorite biomarker, vitamin D3. Why is it probably my favorite biomarker? It's my favorite biomarker because it makes me look really good as a doctor. <laughs> it also makes my job way easier. Within days to weeks of patients correcting their vitamin D3 deficiency, which they probably have, 
they all of a sudden feel better. Their mood lifts, their energy picks up, their posture improves, their bones thicken, their brain speed speeds up, and they just generally feel better. They're also getting further and further and further away from disease. I once wrote a study called the A to Z of vitamin D3, and I can think of a letter in the alphabet for every disease except for X. So how many of you know your vitamin D3 level? That's very good. I think that all of us need to know our vitamin D3 level. Now, the level, the target level for vitamin D3 is 70 nanograms per mil. And the average in this room, if you're not taking a supplement of vitamin D, is 22 nanograms per mil. And that level is dropping. That's low enough to drastically increase our risk of cancer. It also qualifies as SAD, seasonal affective disorder, which is a form of depression from not enough sunlight. Now, why is this happening? Voltaire said, the art of medicine is entertaining the patient while nature cures the disease. And in the case of vitamin D3, I really believe that to be true. It would be definitely true if we hadn't messed with our relationship with the sun. But unfortunately, and especially in polluted cities, smog makes it very difficult for sunlight to get to our skin, where vitamin D3 is produced. But that layer of smog extends over the entire planet. So all of us are subject to less vitamin D3 from the sunlight. It's also agricultural practices, excessive sunscreen use, uh, not enough exposure outdoors, and perhaps poor medical advice which has landed us all with this epidemic. Now, can we eat vitamin D? Well, no, we can't really, because it's animal sources. That's where vitamin D3 is found. And all the animals also have vitamin D3 deficiency. And they're probably sad, too. <laughs> and yes, my dog takes vitamin D3. Now, we can blame some of our agricultural practices. Unfortunately, we now grow chickens in the dark often, and they yield eggs in a much less time than they used to, making the amount of vitamin D3 in them lower. So I say eat a healthy diet, definitely, but do take a supplement, a supplement high enough, and in my experience for adults, that's at least 5,000 I use a day. Take a supplement, make your life easier, make all of us doctors' lives easier. Now, on to the next topic, easy biomarker for everyone to understand and fix. That's to do with sugar. These are red blood cells, nice, slippery, smooth red blood cells that travel through our vessels, carrying oxygen to our brain and organs. Now imagine these same red blood cells with a candy coating on them. <laughs> that process is called glycation. It makes these red blood cells hard and difficult to pass through our vessels. It makes them sticky and it causes inflammation, which is the source of so many diseases we understand now. The number of this we can count, it's called hemoglobin A1C. And I'm a little concerned that probably up to half of you in this room are already pre-diabetic. HbA1c is the biggest predictor of diabetes. It's also a huge predictor of cancer because sugar is cancer food. It's also a predictor of cognitive decline. Now, if this doesn't have your attention, it's also a leading cause of wrinkles. <laughs> so insulin, we all hear about insulin because we know that when it runs out, we can get diabetes. But if you're struggling with weight loss and have an insulin difficulty, then you need to know your insulin number. Getting this number under control can get you greater success with weight loss and prevent diabetes. And the heart disease, the cancer, and inflammation that follows from this cascade of biomarkers that are not quite right. So how to get them lower? Well, I say get to know your numbers and do your own experiments because study them yourself. Unfortunately, in this time and age, the gap between scientific knowledge and common knowledge is the biggest in time. So study it yourself, and it may be eating dark chocolate, or turmeric, or cinnamon, or whatever it is, monitor your numbers and see them improve and learn for yourself. Now there's a drug out there too, and this drug's been around for 100 years. 
treating diabetes. And this year, we decided, wow, this drug may be the one drug that can extend age. It can make us live longer and healthier. Now, that drug comes from a plant. So I'm quite happy to tell you I take this thing every day because I know genetically my risk, my highest risk, is diabetes. So I encourage you all, know your numbers, study your numbers, and empower yourself. So thank you.